Right, we've locked the dog and the cat in the sitting room, so we should get some peace now. And uh, we're going to just show you how to do the couching. So in books, um, of the mostly of the 20th century, they ask you to come up here and down there, up here, down there, up here, down there, up here and down there, and work up the the actual thread line. But actually in the past, professional embroiders didn't do that at all. They actually put a little tiny seeding stitch in here to keep the line true. And then they would come up here, down there, and then go straight up over these crosses. So that keeps your couching straight. And that's very important when you do a large couching stitch. So I'm just going to show you that. little tiny stitch and this is not going to show because it'll be covered by the um, the long and short stitch later and then I'm going to come up and down like that so that's quite a big stitch but uh, you really do want that to show on this particular design so and then put a little tiny stitch in the top of that line then a little tiny stitch or part of another stitch showing in the top of the next line and you'll see that you pretty well come out at about the same level as the line of the other one and it doesn't matter if it's not totally accurate because you know what nature is not accurate and this should look as natural as possible so i'm actually going to just work this stitch you can only you're going to only going to see half of it but it still needs to go in. And perhaps you just see a little peep of that next one. Now I don't need the little tiny seeding stitch there because you're actually on the edge. And that one, I don't think you'd see anything there. And then you can carry your thread across to the other side and just come up and see a little tail end of that one. Ooh, I can hear the wind whistling outside. That's the cat flap whistling. It isn't really the trees. And just don't be distracted if you hear a tap tap because that's the hens telling us they were very hungry this morning and they must know that we're going to get a little cold snap. So you work the whole of one direction before you begin the opposite direction. So you can see that these lovely uh, couching stitches are very straight. And I'm just going to catch that one at the bottom because I want to keep that line true. Now, where else would there be? Up here, I think. And um, would there be anything else? Can you say anything, Richard? Mm -hmm. <laughs> the man who dare not speak. <laughs> no opinion is required of you in work, in normal life. <laughs> just that we're in slightly locked down at the moment and we're having to talk about all sorts of things but um i'm allowing myself three phone calls a day to friends and that's rather rather lovely for me but um and we occasionally have facetime with grandchildren and um of course we're all missing everybody very badly and i'm sure everybody is but you know what when i'm doing a stitch that i find challenging i can't think about anything else and I'm finding this very soothing talking to you and really appreciate the lovely emails and phone calls and everything else that we've been engaging with. Right. OK, so the opposite direction, obviously, you find your line. Now, I don't start at the top and work down or at one side and work down if I'm unsure of where the stitches are going to go. I actually might just start at the side like that, about halfway down. Just use anything you like to keep your line. And that's a little tip, today's top tip. So if you find it difficult to keep your line or your distances, just mark a piece of cardboard, anything you like, just take it and just work up and down with the cardboard in place. And you can just mark it there and there and that would give you an even space. So if you're a neat freak, you can do that. If you're a little bit wilder like me and like a lot of cruel workers, you don't need to do that. And you know what? There's no such thing as the stitch police. Just have a bit of fun and I'll see you another day.